Good afternoon. My name is Shannon Estenos, and I am the Assistant Secretary of the Interior for Fish and Wildlife and Parks. I oversee the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Park Service. I'd like to thank the Coastal and Heartland National Estuary Partnership for inviting me to be here today. Although I'm not with you in person, my heart is never too far from my home state of Florida, where, before I came to Washington just last year, I spent my entire career working on environmental and water issues in the Everglades and on both the southwest and southeast coasts of Florida. I'm also a fifth-generation Key West conch, so I know intimately the climate change challenges facing our beautiful and fragile state, including central and southwest Florida. Our national parks and wildlife refuges and the animals, fish, and plants that live there and across Florida are increasingly being impacted by rising seas, warmer temperatures, unpredictable weather, and more dangerous storms. Lowering greenhouse gas emissions and mitigating the climate damage they do are top priorities for me and for the Biden-Harris administration. In 2020, the United States experienced 22 extreme weather and climate-related disaster events with a cumulative price tag of nearly $100 billion. Few states are as dramatically impacted by climate change as Florida. The people and communities of Florida are on the front lines of a rapidly and dramatically changing climate and all that that brings. Like places all over the world, poorer communities in Florida are particularly vulnerable to the shortcomings of aging infrastructure and to the vagaries of shifting economies that climate change can expose and cause, respectively. The peninsula has warmed more than one degree Fahrenheit over the last century, and seas are rising one inch per decade, a trend that we know will continue over the next century. Hurricanes and heavy rainstorms produce more intense rainfall than ever before, even as king tides inundate city streets and stormwater systems with seawater several times per year. Paradoxically, drought conditions in parts of the state are also intensifying, exacerbating wildfire, peat soil oxidation, and hypersaline estuarine conditions. Offshore, warmer Atlantic and Gulf waters bleach coral reefs while reducing the food sources that fish and other animals need to survive. Warmer water also fuels algal blooms that wreak havoc all over Florida, but particularly on Gulf communities, fish, plants, and wildlife. Offshore, rising saltwater levels inundate freshwater wetland systems and allow mangroves to spread into those systems, or worse, cause wetland soils to collapse and disappear altogether, eroding coastal systems critical to the peninsula's resilience against storms. These dramatic changes in climate and habitat put tremendous stress on species, particularly those already struggling under the pressures of development, drainage, poor water quality. Species including Florida panther, the Florida scrub jay, the grasshopper sparrow, and the Florida manatee. Okay, so things are tough, and the future is full of potentially very bad outcomes for nature and for people, which is why we have to act to reduce the likelihood of bad outcomes by addressing the causes of climate change and by mitigating its negative impacts. We need to build resilience in our natural systems and our human communities. In short, as a nation, we can either pretend everything is just fine or we can rise to meet the moment. The Biden-Harris administration, including the U.S. Department of the Interior, is choosing to rise to the moment. We are creating a new and better course we're listening and learning from affected communities. And we're part of a whole of government approach to address the climate crisis. We're working to build a clean energy future and to invest in modern, resilient climate infrastructure that will create millions of jobs while protecting communities and our natural and cultural resources. In 15 short months, the Biden-Harris administration has made exciting progress on its goal to achieve 100% carbon-free electricity by 2035 and to meet the Energy Act of 2020's goal of permitting 25 gigawatts of renewable energy on public lands by 2025. Since President Biden took office, the administration has approved 18 onshore projects, totaling over 4 gigawatts, 
and we've initiated processing of another 54 priority projects with the potential to add at least 27.5 gigawatts of clean energy. We are definitely on our way to a renewable energy future. We know that even as we build a new renewable energy sector, we have to address the immediate threats climate change is already presenting to people and to nature. Through the America the Beautiful initiative, the administration has set an ambitious goal of conserving 30% of the nation's lands and waters by 2030 by investing in locally led projects and programs. You know, one of the first biggest and most successful efforts to restore and protect nature at the landscape scale, while also contributing to the prosperity and resilience of human communities, can be found right here in Florida. Everglades Restoration, the massive water infrastructure program designed to undo the unintended ecological consequences of 19th and 20th century drainage, was so far ahead of its time. I mean, not only is Everglades Restoration remaking infrastructure on a massive scale, but it has created entirely new policy and governance frameworks to facilitate ecosystem scale restoration. I am so proud that President Biden has, in 15 short months, invested more federal dollars into Everglades restoration than any president before him, and by a long shot. Between his two budget requests and the bipartisan infrastructure law, the president has aimed more than $1.8 billion of investment at Everglades restoration. The Biden-Harris administration understands what we're trying to do in the Everglades. The administration understands that infrastructure investment, climate resilience, and ecosystem restoration can and should go hand in hand. Healthy ecosystems and species are more resilient generally to disease, to disaster, and yes, to climate change. Of course, we're not just working in the river of grass. We're working all over Florida to address both short-term threats and to build long-term resilience into the natural systems that in turn will make human communities more resilient and which are at the center of Florida's tourism and recreation economy. So just a few examples of what it means to respond to immediate threats. Rising seas have wiped out nesting sites for American alligators in the Florida Keys. So we're building artificial nests for them. We're also planting endangered cactuses in the Keys further from the ocean and the ever encroaching salt water. This year, we piloted a feeding program to reduce manatee mortality on the east coast of Florida while we work to focus the attention of both the public and government resources on longer-term solutions, such as improving water quality and increasing access to habitat across the manatees' range. Yes, even as we triage immediate threats to specific vulnerable places and species, we have to simultaneously be investing in building lasting resilience. In other words, we have to walk and chew gum at the same time. I mean, I think about the incredible work of citizens, landowners, and government to create the Florida Wildlife Corridor, that string of wildlife refuges, national parks, state lands, and private lands linking the Everglades to the Panhandle. I mean, that epitomizes the America the Beautiful approach to landscape-level conservation. Florida panther and many other threatened and endangered species benefit from connected and healthy ecosystems. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is creating a climate corridor for federally threatened frosted flatwood salamanders at the St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge. We're restoring 39 acres of climate-threatened migratory bird sanctuary adjacent to the JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge on Sanibel. Now, lest this small sampling of work in Florida seem random or scattered, know that at DOI, our conservation efforts in Florida are guided by the Southeast Conservation Adaptation Strategy Blueprint a digital mapping tool that pinpoints critical areas for conservation and restoration. And these are just a few of the climate mitigation efforts being undertaken at the Interior Department. There are many more. Florida is a special place. I know it, you know it, the Biden-Harris administration knows it. Uniquely beautiful and fragile, it is a beacon of warmth and wonder that draws generation after generation of people from all over the world. We must work together to protect this precious place. Our commitment to the Sunshine State is steadfast, ambitious, and optimistic. And the Everglades taught me, and many others, how to think big, how to be bold, how to believe that things are possible, and then the Everglades inspired us to work hard to make them so. I look forward to facing the future in partnership with you and your communities. 
we can chart a bright future for nature and people in Florida by working hard and by working together. Thank you.